Alrighty, so here I've got something different. It's this little um, ZB775920 from eBay. It's a chip on board or cob LED. You can see in there there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows, to, uh, ten columns, two rows. Um, so 20 LEDs in there and it has an on off button on the back, a few modes. It's also got a uh, USB, micro USB charging port there, if that wants to focus, and it takes an 18650. What it also comes with is this little adapter. So you can fill it with some AAAs and put that in in place of the 18650, which is pretty neat. I'll definitely use that for something at some point. Now, it is, oh, is that 18650? Yeah, all right. Okay, so it doesn't take an 18650 that's got a protection circuit built in. That's the first thing to be aware of. So you can use a raw 18650. Uh, this one, it's actually decent spec. So it slots straight in. That means there must be a protection circuit like a DWO one inside this, but we'll find out. Clip it in and then turn it on. So that's its full brightness. It's slightly lighter. That's obviously using PWM, we've got some rolling shutter there. And then it doesn't have, have an SOS mode, it's got an epileptic party mode. So I'd avoid doing that and pointing it at anyone. Now let's see if the camera wants to do just down. All right, I'll give them some credit. All those LEDs look pretty well balanced and uniform. Yeah, that's it's not happening, is it? Nor is that. So, all right, the LEDs on the chip are matched up. But I did have two curiosities mainly. One is the lumen output. So let's grab our meter. Drive misplaced, there she is. <clears throat> this isn't the best meter, but this digital lux meter is definitely accurate enough that you know I check my new LED globes when I buy them and um, compare them to some reference data. So what we'll do, let's have a look at Full brightness, make sure we're getting as much of this as possible, which looks like it's about there. And <clears throat> maxing out some of the numbers here. Okay. So, getting about 40,000. Let's just see where that number maxes out. Yeah, about 60 odd thousand lux. So what we're seeing roughly here is at six inches, about 7,000 lux, which is good to know. <clears throat> Pardon me clearing my throat. I've had gluten today. I'm not supposed to. Now the next thing, let's just pop this battery out for a minute. Uh, uh, yeah, let's use a screwdriver. Don't use a screwdriver. It's not the best way to get lipos out, or at least do it by the negative end. I have already popped this open to have a quick look, which is why I started to cast my doubts, but I'm probably going to scrap this for parts. Now, this was on eBay, as I said, and it was just $15. So, for $15, I think it's pretty good. I actually thought it was bigger. Um, the dimensions that they listed on eBay, I can't remember off the top of my head, but my rule is here. <clears throat> and this is yeah about 117 mil that way and 76 mil that way I think that's roughly what I had on the eBay listing I'll put a link in the description down below but it looked bigger I thought it was bigger either way super handy as a little light the reason I bought it though is it said 15 dollars, which is great. There might have been a dollar postage or it might have been free postage, I don't know. Uh, $15 in my head. However, it said 350 watts. Now, maybe that's apparent watts, but it did say reference data as well. So I'm curious how how that was worked out. And I've opened a, a while, I commented and they replied and said, can you let us know how or why you work this out? So I thought, yeah, well, let's actually find out. If, <clears throat> if you've got 20 
LEDs and they're drawing say two volts each being super conservative, you might have two runs. Oh, you're gonna have a parallel and series, can't quite tell. Mix and match in here, it's just a little LED, uh, aluminium plate, quite thin too. Um, I can't imagine you would get much above maybe, I don't know, 11 amps maximum, but even then this cable, I don't think it's gonna handle 11 amps. So first off, let's set it like this. Now, what I'm gonna do for my own safety is try not to short the chip. Actually, even better is put a battery back in it first. Then I wanna turn it on and measure the voltage so we get an idea of what sort of array of bits is inside it. I just don't wanna blind myself, so. LED can go under the wizard skin, like that. I'll get my probes out. And just to confirm, you know, LiPo batteries, 4.7 when they're full, 3.2 uh, when they're full, 3.7 operating, and this one's, yeah, really full, sitting at 4.17. So, this is gonna have the circuitry in there to step this down or up, depending on how it's configured. And let's see what it's doing. Oh yeah, that's bright. Right, this is actually a bit finicky and it's starting to blind me. Ah, oh, crapo. Let's try this again. You probably saw that, but I didn't. 2.97. Two point nine five volts. If I stop slipping, that's interesting. All right, so that's pretty much LED voltage for these. I can only assume, which means that they're um, just it's parallel or series. It's two point nine volts. That's LED voltage. So that has to be um, in series. Not parallel, parallel would add the voltage. I think, oh, get those backwards. Sorry if that's backwards. Uh, now what I want to do though, is actually see how many amps it's drawing. So when I was 2.95, let's strip this off, put the meter in line and measure the current. That will then give us the wattage. Oh, that was a mistake, wasn't it? Oh, can I get that in there? Do it this way. Sorry, my hands are kind of in front of this, but you will live. It's just easier for me to have the right side of myself available. I guess my hands are probably going to be in the way either way, aren't they? So, too bad. If you're watching this, it's not like my normal content. This does have a bit to do with cooking. Um, I mean, all the electronic stuff I do comes back to cooking in the end. But this is. Um, Primarily for their support case, or sorry, primarily for my entertainment, but also for their support case, and also just to make a bit more content. So make sure these clamps are nicely on those wires, so there is no resistance. That is on the 10 amp mode, just in case. I probably got a blown fuse. Yeah, I think I've got a blind fuse, is that? Oh, no, it still works. Clip it back on, I can't see out of my eyes now. Just in case that was a bad clamp. Oh, okay, it was. That's... That's really strange, that, that can't be right. Half an amp. If you got half an amp times 
2.95, then you've got, let's call that 0 0.6 amps uh, times 2.95. So you're going to be getting about 1.7 watts, I think. That is not much at all. But I mean, that kind of tracks. If you think that each of these LEDs probably draws about 30 milliwatts, uh, I'm just referencing specs off the top of my head. I think LEDs are in two to three volts, uh, 20 to 45 milliwatts. So 35, 30 milliwatts times 20 is that 0 0.6 amps we're getting at its base voltage. So this is closer to one watt or two watts if we round up than it is 350. If it was 350, these wires would melt that circuit, which is probably rated for one amp, I thought I got a buzz then, but now I'm just being a spastic, rated for probably one amp maximum would melt through, and it would be a lot more expensive. So the last thing to check is probably what chip is actually inside there, or what's powering it, uh, if it does have a regulator in there. Also, if you look at some 350 watt cobs, they are actually big beefy bastards with a lot of individual LEDs in there. So, yeah, that's certainly not the case here. This is gonna open up with an extra tool, so let's just grab that. The hell did I put it? Rearranging my lab at the moment, so stuff is everywhere. All right, I found it, the label peeled off, so my built-in mental pattern recognition of finding it. It is also a faulty kit, but it will do the job for this. That'll get it open. So let's pop the whole thing open. I mean, there's a few odds and ends in here, it's probably worth the 15 bucks. It is definitely bright enough that, you know, you can Stick a battery in it if the power goes out and see your way around. It's definitely no workshop light, there's no outdoor illumination. It's a short use hobby light, I guess. I'd be curious what you could make like this for 15 bucks. I've got some of these 18650 holders. I've got some of these charging units. Um, I've even got some microcontrollers I can chuck in there to make them do some interesting things. Uh, what's that? Oh, I've even got an AT Tiny 85 if you want to go super cheap. That's probably got enough to actually look after it. You could probably have some complicated outputs on it if you want to run a bit more of a detailed situation. So all these things are like a dollar each. Assembly time. Uh, yeah, it's going to get near 15 bucks, isn't it? Case. Worth it for the case if I stick a bigger, bigger lamp in there. Alright, screws going everywhere. What have I missed? Hundred screws later, and a bit plastic. Got a very simple looking circuit in there. What is that little chip on the back? That's Zero six eight N A. That is going to be some little inline MOSFETs or something. But I'll Google it and stick it in the description as well. So let's just pop this out now. Let's see. I hope that there is 
Well, let's pop this out as well in case I short something. It's praying to hope there is a regulator in here. And actually, it looks like it looks almost exactly like one of the boards I've got down there. Oh. This complex board is a button. Let's cut the chip off. That could be just a very basic microcontroller. I don't know what to be with six pins that just alternates between those modes because there's only one in, one out. Um, so that is probably just a tiny, tiny Turing microcontroller. And this is very similar to the one I was just looking at. Uh, what have we got over here? I mean, here's what you probably really want to see. So this one, if the light is up the brightness, uh, by the way, a bit. So in here, you've got your outputs, you've got your battery, and then you've got your inputs or your USB. So this has the charging chip and the LiFo focus. The charging chip, can I lock that? Yeah, and the LiFo regulation. So, So the TC4056A, that is a very, very common chip. And then it's got something I can't read. So that's your TC there, that's the common chip. Great, nice work, autofocus. And then that's the DW01 right there. So we'll get you a nice good view of this. Yeah, you get the idea. These are really handy. I've got a variety of these in uh, different formats, also from eBay. And then this is lacking. It has this tiny chip I can't read. It just says 17X on it. So I'm honestly doubting that this would protect from over discharge or overcharge. Uh, Yeah, this one on the back isn't a DWO one either. So this is doing all the work and it's not protecting your battery. So there is also a possible fire risk if you overcharge it. And we can even see what charging voltage it's charging at. See if it's pumping five volts straight into, straight into it. You could risk damaging your battery or even having a thermal event blowing it up. Uh, but if you over discharge it, you can also permanently destroy your battery and you don't want either of those things. So let's just grab a USB cable here. Uh, that looks... Yep. Random floor USB cable. This lovely DIY device I got. It's got every output a boy could want and every input. You can even charge it with lightning and you fill it with your own 18650s. It is wunderbar. Then, I don't want to ruin my battery, but I want to see if it would ruin my battery. This charging circuit with a little LED. If I get it the right way around, that's That's me being special, that's why. That one goes in there, that one goes in there. All right, that makes more sense. It is charging this battery, which is nearly full, with adequate voltage. So it's not, I don't know that's gonna cut it off. It should cut it off very soon, but at least there is some voltage regulation. Um, look, end of the day, it does work. This little chip, wherever I've already lost it here, is pretty neat. It's your standard blue LEDs under there with the phosphorus coating and this kind of silicony gel that makes it turn white. Basic aluminium heat shrink, not too thick, but it is two watts maximum. 
The lightweight holder built into this is handy. The case is probably good if you retrofit a different chip on it. You can find another chip that is roughly 10 mil by, use a ruler correctly, 60 mil. Pardon me. That'll do it. But for any lipos you care about, I wouldn't use this setup. Or if you do, cut this out, chuck it straight in the bin, and put something that's actually got voltage regulation in it. Uh, throw them back in the pile. Oh yeah, these. So these are the new ones that I got uh, that are USB-C. Just one amp, but it's got your, see there, it's got your input, your output, your battery, and USB-C port. And it's got your, whatever that common chip is I said just before that I've already forgotten, and your little DW01 on the bottom left as expected. These are good and safe and cheap as chips. This is cheap as chips and not good and not safe. Hope that helps someone. I'm not going to bother editing this. It just gives you an idea of what to look for in some of this no-name brand stuff you find on eBay. Um, not worth it for the parts, in my opinion. Didn't come with a battery. It came with this thing, which is useful. This chip, which, oh, this cob, which I'll use for something else, but is maybe like a 30 cent cob. And the case is pretty plasticky, so these are the useful bits out of it. Not worth fifteen dollars, two bucks on eBay. Enjoy.